All right, hello everyone. So this is going to be a reflection railway guide. But uh, before we begin, I want to say that uh, I will be talking about a lot of things about reflection railway. So if you are spoiler, if you want spoiler free stuff, I'm not going to give it to you. So just leave right now. For all those new players, I'm going to start off with how to get a friend. All right. So from from this window menu, literally any menu actually, just click on season one orientation or whatever your button here is. And this will open up manager, company, and friends. So you go to your friends, you add anyone you want here. Just add anyone under the add friends. Just add, 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 add. And when they accept it through the inbox, they just click like this, click like this. That will uh, give you access to uh, their characters as a borrow option. Yes, you can borrow in this game in case you did not know. So now I'm going to enter Refraction Railway and I'm going to show you how to borrow. So this is my main team comp. By the way, um, this character over here is not obtainable by you guys, but everyone else here is obtainable because this is a season one unit, standard, 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 standard. All of these characters here are obtainable by anyone and they are really, really strong. This is called the Unga Bunga team pretty much. There's like, uh, all of these characters function very well by themselves. They do not need any support and they just do crazy amounts of damage output. So these characters are Unga Bunga. And Regret Faust is one of the most Unga Bunga characters, but she is unfortunately Walper Giz Knight Limited, which means that she only comes every season. It's like Gala from Psy Games, or you can treat it like, um, I guess, the limited character banner in Arc Knights. I think it's somewhat similar to that one. So yeah, you will not be able to get her right now. You have to wait until Walper Giz Knight comes back. Then you can go and uh, pull for her or spark for her. So how do you get this character? Go to support. Go to any of these friends that you have, just borrow one character and then press back and that will give you the character again. So, let me show you again. Huh? This is the not supported version. I click on the character, I go to support, I click on my friend's one, I click back and now he has a support tag. So this is the supported character. You can only support one character, you cannot support multiple characters. So, if you want to borrow anyone, highly recommended to borrow this character here. If you want to make your life um, more comfortable is always going to be Faust, pretty much. The key thing to look out for when you borrow Faust is look for Fluid Sack IV. You need a level 4 Fluid Sack. If you see a Fluid Sack level 3, don't take it. Level 4 is very significant for Faust because level 4 Fluid Sack heals an additional 10 SP on top of 15 SP, giving you 25 SP in total to all allies. It's extremely, extremely strong and one of the most important things to have for a comfortable run. Besides that, what are the other egos that you may want for this kind of team comp? If you have them, it'll be very good. Otherwise, you're going to have to compensate. For example, Sun Shower Ego. This ego is Season 2, so it's available for everyone. And it is extremely strong. It is one of the strongest 7 AoE egos in the game. And it even fully restores your SP if you roll hits. It's extremely, extremely good and will be ultra useful for this Refraction Railway. Faust, I told you, uh, Fluid Set. For Heathcliff, all you need is Body Sack and nothing else. For uh, Ishmael, all you need is Other Blossom Star and then your base ego. For W Don, you, you bring Teleple Dawn and your base ego, and that's it. If you don't have Teleple Dawn, you may not want to use W Dawn. In that case, just use a Honglu instead. Honglu is also a very, very strong ID. Next, we have Dichi. Dichi will just bring Rhymeshank for AoE. Don't really need Sanguine Desire unless you are going for a Bleed Build. And then after that, we also have Ryoshu, Ryoshu Ego, all you need is Forest for the Flames and 4th Match Flame. And then lastly, Ninclair, you will never use this Ego if you have Cavernous Wailing Sinclair, the base Ego replacement, feel free to replace it. Otherwise, always use Impending Day with Ninclair. Alright, so that is the core team as you can see here, with Ting Tang as an option and mostly as a support passive, as well as Gcop Gregor as a support passive. Their support passives are really, really good because if you look at Ting Tang's one, it is going to be 30% more damage with hit coin for one ally with the most SP. Very simple, very powerful. G Corp Gregor, very simple also. Ally with the least HP, heals 5 HP after winning a clash, provides some extra sustain. Very, very nice to have. Right. So just very, very simple stuff here. These two characters, you can put whatever you want there. It's all support passives. It doesn't matter who you put here. I will never use an Otis. I will never use a Masalt for this entire run. So I did not put an actual ID there. If you want an actual ID, you could put in like 
I don't know, Ring Otis is very strong, but the Otis is very good by herself as well. Seven Association is decent by herself as well. Um, Shoot this is okay, it's not like amazing unless you go full burn. If you go full burn, then feel free to put in your Otis. Mola Otis is better in a team. Right. So that's the explanation for this one. Mursault, he's just not DPS focused, so he's not going to be used at all in this real way because this real way is all about DPS and clashing. Right. So I think that is covering everything. Uh, the main resources that you need to look out for are going to be Wrath as well as your Gluttony. Gluttony, the only way you get it is through Rabbit Heathcliff since that's the only one I will be using. Uh, your Rabbit Heathcliff must be Uptie 4 because Uptie 4 gives you this line here. At the start of the stage, gain 3 ammo because that extra ammo is going to help you a lot in your managing of this railway. Right. The first stage, the first section, is always going to be the hardest because there's no SP, there's no Egos. So you really do need to manage your Ego resources very well in the first stage. So I uptight for him to get the additional 3 bullets to help me out. Right. So this is going to be my main team comp and my main Gluttony generator is going to be Rabbit Heathcliff. It does not matter if he runs out of bullet in the first one, I need the Gluttony otherwise Sun Shower is not usable. So yeah, this team comp suffers from a lack of glut. If you can go and get Spice Bush or something instead, to get more gluttony in your team, that's also a viable option. But for this team, I'm just going to use this kind of team here just to unga bunga my way through. All right. Starting off with the resistances. Wave one, enemy, week two slash, week two sloth, week two pride, and week two lust. Sloth, pride, uh, sloth, uh, lust weakness, very, very good for our ring sung in particular, and also very good for quite a lot of our characters like Ning Claire skill two. The ref resistance kind of sucks because a lot of our big skills are also going to be ref, and the endurance to envy is going to suck. But we have 1.5 times slash weakness to compensate, as well as pride weakness for our skill two for Yoshu. So we are still pretty much okay to go for this. Uh, just take note the piercing is by default resistant. So it's gonna suck a little bit for Ring Sung and Rabbit at the start. For wave two, the enemy resistances go a bit crazy. There are some that are two times weak to slash. There are some that are maybe 1.5 times weak to slash. And then the bosses are going to be weak to blunt instead and resist piercing. While Hindley is going to be weak to certain elements and just resistant to like all of this stuff here. So it's a bunch of um, assorted like resistances. Sometimes weak to blunt, weak to slash, weak to um, blunt again, weak to elements. So you just want to bring AOE. Just AOE them all. If they get staggered, it's just a regular killing spree anyway. The HP is not very high. It goes to like 200, 600, and 1000. Hindley is a joke. He is not an actual boss. He is like a fake boss with like a billion weaknesses and no clashing power. So don't worry about him. And then for the last fight, it's Nelly. Nelly is also a very simple boss. All you need to do is just slash her to death, beat her up, just kill her as fast as you can. If you want to bring a status team for this section here, feel free to bring um, a Tremor team because Tremor can help with the AoE here. You can also bring Burn because Burn has Philip Clare and Philip Clare AoE is extremely good for this fight over here. So I wouldn't recommend any other status unless you want to in particular speed run this fight with Rupture, speed run this fight Rupture and use Ego Spam to clear this part. In which case then it could also be a viable option. There's a lot of different things but I'm using Unga Bunga because it's the simplest to understand because all you do is win rate. All right. So that the with the weaknesses and types in mind, let's just enter the fight. So starting off, we will be using a very easy team of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something like this. Because we are going to use Rabbit for the quick suppression bullets and we are going to use Ring Sung when the enemy is staggered to just apply a bunch of damage. He's, he's ridiculously broken for damage, which is why I always bring him along and I think he's very, very strong. So as you can see, right? you get buffs in this, railway, in this railway. So the way to do this, right, is based on position. So for example, I want to give identity level to Sinclair because the higher level he is, the less SP he will gain and that's good for Sinclair. So I'm going to give him the levels. Uh, the next one is healing efficiency. I'm going to give it to Regret Faust so that she can um, get some starting SP plus 10 as well as the efficiency. Offense level up. Um, honestly, all of them have very good clashing power by themselves so they don't need it. but. Heathcliff skill 1 could use a little bit of a boost, so I'm going to give it to him. And then after that, we have defense level, which is useless. And then we have max speed. Actually, I just remember something. I should give max speed to Heathcliff so I can get my quick suppression. And then the 6 will be max HP, which doesn't matter. And then what about all these characters? Just pick in any order, it doesn't matter. The backups only come in when your character dies. So unless you're expecting to die, you are not going to get the backup. So just pick them in whatever order you want, it does not matter. You only need to care about the initial 6. Alright, so let's just go. 
Alright, so turn one, I have quick suppression, but no body sack, so I'm gonna have to rely on the speed RNG here in order to get it. Uh for now I will be trying to conserve my bullets by spamming evasions pretty much. Uh I'm going to rely on fluid sack in order to heal SP for Heathcliff. I know that you need to roll a lot of hits for quick suppression, but unfortunately can't really do that this early in the game. Right, and then besides that, for the first three turns, it's all SP gain. That is all we are going to do. Gain SP, gain SP, gain SP. So just use your best moves early, just try to win every single clash as much as you can. And here Cliff, you can just dodge this one over here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, one little optimization you can do is you can let the enemy hit your Ninclair. Because the enemy will inflict sinking on your Ninclair and that will help you to corrode faster. And that is very good for Ninclair. So if you want to do that, feel free to. I will not do it because I do not want to make this more complicated for new players. Okay, we lost. That is expected. Like, you will lose some of this. You can't really do anything about it. So don't worry about losing, just keep going. Alright, so let's see, clash this, neutral clashes with all of this, sure, oh we got a quick suppression going on, love to see it, alright we'll fire one quick suppression here, mm, we'll get more sanity for these characters over here, let's build them up. Unfortunate. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of hits. So he will now trigger an event, just answer with whoever has one of the highest rolls. So I'm just going to slap in an Ishmael here. And now he will get 3 offense level down, that's it. This triggers the next phase, and in this phase, you get a bunch of mirror spawns. You can't target any of the mirrors yet, and you also get a bunch of attacks from the boss. These attacks are very, very weak, and they are meant for you to win. If you win them, they will reveal the portrait attached to this skill slot. And that is how you will find out which is the real portrait to attack. So, let us go and win. I'm going to use the skill 2 because I need to generate some gluttony resource for uh, Sun Shower later. Right, and then we take Favored, Dominating, Favored, this as well as this. Do not bother trying to nuke him, he will have 8 protection. Use the bare minimum to win. If it's Favored and it's roughly can win, then just go and go for it pretty much. Alright, and with that, the real painting has revealed itself. It is this one over here. If you look at the names of the defense skills, it is Master, 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 and Master's Portrait. So this is the one that you want to hit. Alright, so we will focus all of our attention to this one. We have to kill it. So to guarantee to kill it, I will try to make sure that I inflict uh, at least two good skills. This is a three coiner and this is a four coiner, so that combined should be enough damage in order to win. Maybe I shouldn't do that actually. Uh, I think I'm going to do this instead. I'm gonna clash because he has low SP. I'm going to use maybe a regret foul skill 3 here. 
just pop it a little bit earlier than expected so that I can guarantee that this thing will die. I need it to die. If it does not die, we will waste one turn. So I'm willing to take that risk. Um, over here, um, we do not need to worry about clashing the enemy anymore. So we can just use our evasion skills and whatnot. Favorite, favorite, favorite. And this one can just hit Faust. It doesn't matter. It only flicks like tree sinking. Okay, that looks good to me. Let's let it fly. <sighs> Very good. Alright, now all the paintings will disappear. And the enemy will now have 5 fragility. So this is the time. Unleash everything that you have upon your enemies. Enemy is moving at about 4 speed. So we can inflict quite a lot of damage to him. Practically guaranteeing a stagger at this point. So I'm gonna do something like this. Um, like this, like this. Followed by this, followed by this. And then Heathcliff can just pop one more skill 2 and you can just use a skill 3 here. Alright, so I'm popping this so I can get 2 Gluttony so I can activate Sun Shower for later. Very very important to always look for Heathcliff skill 2. Alright, enemy has been staggered, now we get a free hits on him. Alright, so we have the two gluttony already. What other resources we need? We need two sloth. Okay, the sloth will naturally fill up by itself. Heathcliff from now on will only use body sack and will only use evasion skills for the rest of the game. There is nothing else to it. Right, so let's just continue to slam a bunch of skills into our enemies so that we can kill them. Uh, nice, we got another one here. We got another pointillism as well. That's going to be a lot of damage. And we got skill one here. Alright, something like this. It's unlikely that you can really one-shot him afterwards, unless you roll really well on the coins. But you can at least nuke him until he's like maybe um, 1 HP or something like that. Alright, so now he's at 203 HP, he's moving at 1 speed, so we can straight up just ignore him. I'm gonna pop a body sack here because next turn I can actually quick suppression someone in the next fight. Uh, and that could be quite valuable. Alright, so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna hit here. Oh, actually Sinclair's HP is quite low, maybe I make him clash. Alright, and then... Um, hmm, do we have enough damage to kill? 203. Okay, yeah, we definitely have enough damage to kill, so we'll just do this. Um, new skill 1 here, uh, because I need uh, 10 Tremor for this one. And then I also want to use my... Is he weak to Sloth? He's weak to Sloth, significantly. So I'll use my skill 3, and then I will use Not Dither. Okay, so it's going to be this, 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 this. Alright, so this should be enough damage to kill him, and should be very, very good for our next run. Uh, I can clash this to get some SP. I can clash this to get some SP. Okay, looks good to me. Okay, that's fine. Alright, welcome to the next act. So as you can see here, bullets do not regen, so that is just like whatever. 
And what happens here is that all of your resources get carried over. So if you could afford to not use a big skill to kill that enemy last turn, you should try to do that so that you'll be able to transfer over all of your resources like your tremor count, your charge count. That's very, very important for these characters. Right. So now I have Heathcliff Quick Suppression available. I am able to fire it one time here. The question is, who do I want to kill? Mm, this guy is... All of them endure pretty much, but Heathcliff will not really care. Heathcliff will just kill you no matter what. Looking for someone with a decent stagger threshold so that I can break through it. Let's break through this one. All right. So slower speed, Isang, attacked by this. Okay. We will just slap him with a hematic coloring. This one, attacking. Regret Faust. Regret Faust has a 11 tremor, so I am able to use skill 3. We do not have Dither, unfortunately, so we have to use skill 1. Um, Sinclair needs to clash something. I cannot let him get corroded. And we have a Mind Whip available for this guy over here. Very nice. If you have Sun Shower at this point, feel free to pop your Sun Shower to just wipe out all of these guys really very fast. Since I do not have Sun Shower on turn 1, I will just use Sun Shower on turn 2. Since after this turn, I will have enough for Sun Shower. And of course, if you don't want to do that, feel free to not do it and just save your resources for later. It's also fine. Like, you can use Fluid Sack here instead. You could use Sun Shower here instead. You could use um, Rhyme Shank here instead. Like, any other option is also fine. Don't have to be Sun Shower. Or you could also not use at all. And now we see the power of Regret Files. Now this one's gonna take a while. Okay, there we go. Nice. Alright, several staggered enemies. Sun Shower available. Fire away. Let's fire it upon this guy over here so we can get maximum damage output. And then besides that, um, Heathcliff, all you'll be doing from now on is body sack, body sack, body sack, body sack. We generate so much loss with this team comp that we can afford to just body sack every single turn. So we have no worries about that at all. Right, hit this one, hit this one. Uh, okay, no, I want Ninclair to clash something over here. Alright, that's good. And then after that, we can just dump a bunch of damage into any of these people over here. Just to build up resources. Alright, so this is going to be very, very punishing for them. Let's see how it goes. Alright, so that was very good damage. Um, you can use other egos if you want to um, speed it up as well. Feel free to do that, but I'm not going to. Let's see. Um, I want to save at least one quick suppression for the next fight, so I can only use my skill 2 one more time, unfortunately. Um, I can guarantee a death though on this guy. 71 damage. If he throws all of it, that's very good. Mm, I have Dader available, so we can use Dader on one of these big boys over here just to make sure that they get staggered and die. And then we can use Ding Claire to clash something here so he gains some SP. One side attacks on this guy to lower his HP. Regret Faust, hit anything you want, really, Regret Faust, because you're broken. And I think this guy is actually dead. Alright. Okay, I can only use one bridge skill one more time with his cliff, otherwise I'll run out of ammo for the last fight. No! We lost! Alright, let's see what we want to do here. Um, that guy is... He basically did. 67... 
Body sack. Okay, that guarantees a stagger on him. Pretty much these two are going to die. Dominating, that's good. Can you clash any of them? You cannot clash any of them. In that case, I might pop a fluid sack. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop a fluid sack here just to guarantee that my Sinclair will not corrode later on. And then after that, I will just keep slapping away at these buggers over here, like this guy. Okay, and then this underpose does 74 damage, which is kill. Yeah, that's a kill. And then we have body sack here, and followed up by EC. Oh, EC is on that one. Okay. In that case, please hit here Sinclair. That should stagger him and make sure he's ready to die later on. And then we can focus down on this guy. Okay, that looks good to me. Isang is just ridiculous. Alright, fluid set coming here to push my Sinclair's SP back to normal. Alright, stagger plus plus, very good. Alright, now that she's dead, Josephine will spawn and this character is ready to die. Very, very good for us. We are going to clash with this. Josephine should be a top priority kill here. We unfortunately ran out of NV due to burning all of it, but it's fine, we'll build up our NV resource later. Alright, slap this, slap this. Um, let's see, Regret Faust has 5 hammer, so we can slap this. And then defense skill here, okay, very good. That guy has 91 HP left. With 91 HP, I think this plus this is enough to finish him off. I'll just do that instead, and then we'll let everyone else do whatever they want. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, Regret Faust is hitting that girl also, so we do not need so much damage onto her. In which case, um, we could just use a skill 1 onto... Actually, let's just use skill 2. No, no, skill 1. We use skill 1 here instead. And then Ninclair needs to clash. Okay, yep. Alright, so Regret Faust hits that, and uh, Yisang, broken character, hits that. Alright, easy. Alright, um, body sack has now been activated. Let us continue our shit. Alright, so Josephine, as you can see, right, is really low on HP. Like, I'm about to stagger her pretty much. So. Abusing that, we are going to just focus her down first, and Hinli is actually not going to do any damage to us at all, so we can straight up just ignore him. Just focus on Josephine. Don't be afraid of the nine coins coming at you. Hinli is literally not a not a human being, like just ignore him. Just focus on killing uh the um Josephine, yeah. Okay, favorite, 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 very good. And then um we could clash like this one because this one is like bleed and I don't like bleed. But all of these guys getting hit by these skills, like whatever, you're not real. Alright, let's go. Very nice. Look at that damage, it does nothing. It's like, who cares? Okay, activate body psych again. Oh, actually, I'm burning my envy like a lot. I'm, I should probably just use defense skills or something. Alright, um, and then we'll just finish her off. She We need about 129 damage, so I think Yisang winning with this and Ryoshu winning with this. 
and just for safety, right? Because I'm not sure if we can do it. We'll just slap like um, one slam over here, and after that, we'll uh, pretty much just start slapping away at this guy over here. Okay, so reindeer attack this, Ninclair attack this. All right, that looks pretty okay. Probably could use an eagle to speed this up, honestly, but whatever. Okay, didn't need it. Alright, fine. We're erring on the side of caution here. Because if we don't get the kill there, we get punished really hard. Alright, now time to kill the whatever this guy is supposed to be. Um, Evasia. Let's see, do we have enough to burst him? Let's just dump a bunch of damage into him and see what happens here. Yeah? Okay, burst, burst, burst. What happened to her sanity? Okay, whatever. Um, oh, I guess she got hit by Josephine, that's why. Mm, she can't make any clashes. Oh man, that sucks. Okay, whatever, whatever. Um, shouldn't be too bad to try and clash this. And then we can dominate that. And then we can one side the attack with this. Okay, no, we shouldn't. We should just like hit like this. And then this. Alright, looks good to me. Fire away! I love Ninclair. Okay, Ninclair, I'm gonna need to guard here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh. Fix suppression extra. Optimal, actually. I think Yisang is too strong. Okay, yep. Mm, never mind. Nothing I can do about that one. Okay, never mind. The guard triggered. The guard is on use, is it? Combat start. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Alright, W. Alright, so Nelly. Nelly is super easy. All we need to do with Nelly is just win rate. Don't have to think, don't have to do anything, just keep win rating. Alright, just keep hitting this, just keep hitting this. Uh, oh, oh, I just realized Faust is like uh, really low sanity right now, so it's gonna be a bit troublesome. We can intercept for her and like that. Okay, there we go. Slap it. You can treat the entire Nelly fight as just resource generation fight. Like, all you're doing here is just gaining resources. It's a very simple boss fight. All you do is win rate everything. Alright, quick suppression active. Prepare to fire. Win rate, win rate, uh, win rate, uh, win rate, and uh, sure, favored, and then um, this skill here to build up some charge, yeah? So we can date her in the future. Okay, and this amount of damage should be enough to stagger her. Especially with quick suppression going first. The plus 2 max speed for Heathcliff is like humongous. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so now let's see. She staggered, just unga bunga her down pretty much. Just keep slapping her with big damage. He cliff at this point it has no more quick suppression, so just uh, dump all of your ammo into the target and just uh, get on with it. <laughs> All right, um, Nelly is close to the second stagger threshold again, so all we need to do is just unga bunga her down, pretty much. Um, this 10 SP, okay, that's fine. We will gain enough SP to not get staggered. Favorite, favorite, uh, dominating, uh, quick suppression. Doesn't matter, just generate resource already at this point. And then favorite over here, and then take over dominating over here. All right, and that should do it. Fire. Alright, we hit the stagger, and that should be a easy Nelly fight. Without the extra 3 bullets from Heathcliff, right, we straight up cannot do what I just did. So yeah, the 3 bullets is actually very very important for this fight. Now we just press the damage button honestly. Just double check, now this one's better damage. Um, okay, that works. Alright, we win. All right, and that is the entirety of section one. All right, very simple uh, section one. Uh, it's going to be the longest section that you do because of the sanity issues that you face. Uh, the low sanity against this guy is very annoying, and then you have to fight these guys without any ego, and after that you have to fight Nelly. Who, I mean, Nelly is not the big problem. The big problem is usually this one and two here. It's going to take quite a few turns to clear. Right, I actually did better than my previous run because I have the knowledge of how to beat them. I did 25 last time and this time I used 21 turns instead. So yeah, this is pretty much a lot better than my previous run and it's why I'm making this video to guide you guys to help have a comfortable clear look. Just one shot, clear all. Alright, so that's going to be it for this section 1. I'm going to talk about section 2 in the next video. Bye-bye.